Activate safety glasses. Welcome to BroTuned, everybody. My name is Ryan, and today we're gonna take my 177 air rifle part and we're gonna change the spring to something a little stiffer. I got from Vortex Springs probably 10 years ago now, but I've never used that spring, so I'm gonna give it a good go today. We already did the porting mod last week, so this week we're gonna do a spring mod. And we're gonna see what kind of feet per second we get difference now. It's snowing a lot outside, so I'm gonna do my croning inside, but the results are kind of crappy with the uh, lights, so I have to bring a nice halogen light in from outside, and we will get some good tests done. So next up, we'll take the rifle apart in my spring compressor, and then we'll mod it. Check it out. Some of the things you're gonna need for sure, spring compressor, air rifle, new springs, crappy tools, couple screwdrivers, and the most important, safety glasses. We're not gonna use safety squints when we're using or playing with big springs and spring compressors because something flies out, hits you in the eye, guess what? You lose that eye, most likely. And we got some rubber gloves because a little bit of oily parts at the hinges and that. A rag, an old t-shirt, an example of mine. And yeah, so let's start pulling this thing apart. Okay, so we need a Phillips screwdriver to get the stock off. That's right size, it'll fit. Yep. Okay. I'm using the crappy tools just to show you that it still can be done with the crappy tools. Good tools are always better, of course. So, I'm going to keep all my screws in this little case here. Okay, you guys can see what I'm doing. It's not a very hard job to do, but let's do it. So, that one, I'm going to need a little bit bigger for the bottom action screw. Just right here. Now, if that's loose, the stock should just come apart from the action. Just like that. Set that aside. Now you have your barreled action and a few pieces that come off the safety and the back cap. Put those in that little tray too. Next up, we're gonna have to disassemble the barrel and remove all this part. So, flat blade screwdriver for that part. Hold the back side because it's just another flat blade screwdriver. And there's a sleeve inside this one. So there's that little piece there. Let me see if the sleeve worked out. Let me push it from the other side. It worked better. There we go. Engage work gloves, oily parts. So I'll just put this back together so we don't lose any parts. Just like that. I should have used two gloves. I didn't. Engage other safety glove. So now you get this lever out. There we go. And just work this out. It's a tight fit, which is good. There's a lot less slot. Set your barrel aside. Now, this is what you're left with. So, let's throw it in the old spring compressor. These two pins here have to come out. But they are under a lot of spring pressure. The spring's right here pushing the trigger group back against those. 
So we're going to take a little bit of pressure off from the back, pop those two pins out, and then slowly release the pressure from the spring compressor. So we'll get that in there. I use a strap just in case something happened and uh, that flies out. It wouldn't be good. Probably hurt a lot. Could break something too. Things can be replaced, but you can't. So now, I'm just gonna guide this in. Take a little bit of the pressure off. And then we have to push those pins out. So, and if you use too much pressure, you're just locking it from the other side. So, there we go. Two pins are out. Put those aside as well. Now slowly release the pressure of the spring. Until it falls free. You're getting too old to be sitting on the ground like this. There, it seems like we're free now. There's no spring pressure holding the, so it's safe to take out now. Trigger group, set that aside. Now your spring and piston and everything is inside of there. I use this screwdriver to push it out. There's the modified spring. And we're gonna swap it over to this spring, which is a bit thicker. It's a little bit shorter as well because we'll get, we get spring bind because the coils are a lot, uh, a lot thicker. I have the spec sheet, I'll throw a picture up right now. And you guys can have a look at the specs of the spring. I had to cut it down, it was 34 before. I cut it down because it was spring binding. So you can see here where I had to cut it and grind it flat. So this is the spring we're swapping out. So take that spring out, set it aside, put the guide into the new spring. Actually, I, yeah, I'll do it this way because that's uh, Keep the flattest side on the bottom here so there's no added pressure just to one part of this. And now, all you gotta do is push that back in, get it started, seat it, get your trigger group. Try to lift that up just a tiny bit. And remember to clamp down the action of the air rifle so it doesn't let go and take you out. This spring's a little bit more pressure, so that should hold it in anyways. And the fun hard part comes when you're trying to line up those dowel holes because this little plastic sleeve here over top of this kind of messes it up and you get a little bit of trouble trying to get those pins back in. So now we're just going to compress the spring and try to keep everything straight. Starting to turn from a little bit of torque there. And you can see this little sleeve thing is moving again. It's kind of a pain in the butt on this, this type of air rifle, the air hawk. It never wants to stay perfectly lined up with the holes, like especially the dowel holes. So it takes a little bit of fiddling around to get them back in. But once you do, get back in business. And watch out the piston pivot points, all these pins, they're all loose, so you could lose those as well. Anyways, let's get her pretty close. And you gotta see if you can see the air. Perfect hole right through where those pins go. I'm gonna bottom it out right there, back it off a little tiny bit. And now let's see what we have. There you can see here, those, that rubber sleeve, it's kinda, of, or plastic sleeve, bushing, or whatever you wanna call it, it's kind of in the way. It's a pain in the butt. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back it off till they line up better. Basically, just a pick. I'm gonna line up the holes with that. So, just Work it, work it in, so everything lines up for us. 
Now it might be a lot easier to punch that dowel pin in. Hopefully. There we go. That was pretty simple actually. Now that persuader is in there. Not quite perfectly, but maybe we'll just jiggle. Tap it. Tap, 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 tap. There we go. Engaged. And then that hole should be lined up because the punch was in it. There we go. So that's in. Now the pins are in holding the trigger group in, which is blocking the spring from coming out so we can back off the pressure. But by far that's the hardest part of the whole, the whole job. Other than putting that safety back in the back, that's another pain in the butt. But now we have our big spring in there and you can see, if I can show you, this right here is the problem. So that thing gets a little out of whack. It's not centered now and then the safety has to go in perfectly on both sides. So what I usually do is hold it like this and it seems to be not, oh, it's probably too far off, but because the safety has this little notch, this little groove in it. And that has to go on both sides of that. So this is another part where you could use another set of hands. But God only gave us two, so. And one's a stranger most of the time. So see if I can get that lined up in the middle. And it never wants to go in the middle. It always wants to go off to one side. Of course, make it harder. So let's see what we can do here. So what I had to do is, once it was off-centered, I got this thing started, the safety lever, and then I just hit the trigger down and it lined it up. That slides in, the back cap goes on, then we got to assemble all the barrel action. So we'll get that started in here. That caulking arm goes into that hole. You just gotta get it kind of started in there. Oh, that's another thing too. You can see here, the piston is not totally centered in the groove. So where's my flat blade here? Just push her over a bit. Just like that. That allows this to pop inside there, like that. Now you line up this hole, the hinge hole, with the barrel. Seems to be in the butt sometimes too. I want you to get it lined up, like that. Let's get this out of the way for a second. Now you take your pin and the nut. Pretty sure it went in from this side. Maybe I'm incorrect on that. Nope. It's not totally lined up perfect yet. Give her a little wiggle. It's gotta go up and back a tiny bit. So once you get that lined up, Use a persuader again here. There we go. It's uh, soft rubber, so it's not going to mar up the metal and stuff. And get that through. The other side on. And then we tighten it down. Flat blade screw there. The knees are starting to get sore here. Feel it from the other side that's not spinning with my other hand. Snugged it up. And put the stock back on. You have that big screw, thicker head. Tighten that down. Always remember to torque it. 
whatever the torque spec is. Click, there we go, torqued. And I like to use blue Loctite on these just so they don't I wiggle loose after, over time. Everything should be actually Loctite. But here we go. Snug these ones up because wood, if you go too much, you'll just compress the wood and kind of ruin your stock. That's that side. One more on this side. Then we're all ready to go. Test fire time. Just like that. Now we just did a spring swap. Let's take a few shots and see what kind of performance gain we got. Caulking force is significantly higher for sure. Basically, I think the first one dieseled pretty good, which was that hole there. But let's see what the pellets look like. So that he didn't go into the second book, but. First book is pretty mangled. Oh, there's one. So there's not much left of that at all. Hitting a lot more force than before. And confetti everywhere. There's another one. Completely flattened out, opened right up. So, it's pretty wild. And there's another one. Yeah, the spring makes a big difference. Now that the new spring's in and we're shooting 850-ish, 870. I think we should maybe retry shooting the dishwasher. And I have a whole bunch of new penetrating pellets as well. So maybe we can do some more damage. So maybe next week, check back. Take care guys, have fun.